You're standing there, staring at your worm bin, waiting for those precious black gold castings, and it feels like watching paint dry. I've been there. But what if I told you that most worm farmers are accidentally slowing down their own production by 50% or more? Today, I'm sharing three game-changing techniques that will dramatically speed up your worm casting production. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Sunnyside Soil. I'm Sunny, and if you are new here, this channel is all about helping you grow healthier plants naturally through better soil. Now, we talk a lot about worm castings here because honestly, it's one of the most powerful amendments that you can make uh, right at home. But here's the thing, most people give up on vermicomposting because it just feels too slow. Stick with me for the next 10 minutes and I promise you'll cut your production time significantly. Method number one is pureeing your food, and this is all because of surface area. Uh, I mean, think about it. Is it easier to have your worms attack this apple core on six sides, or once you puree it, to attack it on uh, infinite sides, millions of different sides? And that's basically what's happening when you puree your food. You're chopping it up, and the surface area becomes exponential. Plus, an added bonus to pureeing your food scraps if you are accumulating scraps faster than your worms can eat them, then pureeing them will break down those scraps, kind of preventing any messy kitchen smell. So here's my process to pureeing. I just kind of take whatever food scraps I have left. I tr generally try to avoid like citrus and onion just because those compounds and those worms don't really like. But I'll just take the scraps and I'll throw it into a blender here. Today I've got like apple cores and avocado peels and some very ripe bananas. Some cauliflower, leftover cauliflower bits. And then I'll just add just a little bit of water. And then I'll just blend it up. What I have left is just this kind of slurry. And it's okay if it's not completely slurried. If there's a little bit of chunks of food left in there, that's fine. And then I'll just take this slurry and kind of create little rows. I don't want to pour it all at once because that could kind of create a mess. Now one thing to consider with this method is that because we've broken down all of the food into a slurry, there's a high water concentration now. So after you've poured it in and they've eaten it for a couple of days, you wanna make sure that you go back into that bin and add some bedding material like shredded cardboard or dry leaves or uh, coconut coir. You just want some extra bedding material to absorb any excess water that uh, pureeing the food creates. Now for a speed comparison in my side-by-side -side tests, pureed scraps disappeared in about three to four days, while those same scraps left whole took about 14 days. That's a huge difference. So if you're running a production system or you just want castings faster, then this technique is a game changer. Method number two is to pre-compost all of the food sources for your worms. Now, this is actually my preferred method. All I do is I take about a gallon of compost that I've been brewing up in my backyard, and I will feed it to my worm bin. This is a, about a gallon's worth of compost. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect 100% finished compost. You can see there's still a lot of leaves in here and some food debris. Um, whatever hasn't broken down yet, the worms will take care of, trust me. In addition to the gallon of compost that I put in here, I will also put a gallon of mushroom substrate. Now, mushroom substrate is uh, basically what's left over when a mushroom farmer has grown their mushrooms. 
and sold it off to market. So this is the leftover block that the mushrooms grew in. So the worms love this stuff because really they're after the microbiology. I'll just kind of mix it up a little bit here so that the compost and the mushroom substrate are together. There's about 2,000 worms on this bin currently, so I will check back in about a week to see how quickly they've eaten both the one gallon of compost and the one gallon of mushroom substrate. If it looks like they've worked their way through it pretty well, then I will add another gallon of each. Now there is a downside to this method. There are critters other than worms that live in your compost bin. So if your worm bin is indoors, you might not want to bring all those other critters in with the compost. Now, you may not care that you're bringing in other critters from indoors, in which case this method might work for you perfectly. But if you do care about bringing critters indoors, let me show you how to make compost inside that's critter free. Now to make your own compost, you'll need a 17 gallon storage bin. And to it, we're gonna add three gallons of shredded cardboard. If you don't know how to get shredded cardboard, I'll leave a link below to the shredder that I like. Now to this shredded cardboard, I'm going to add some water. And it should be just enough water that the shredded cardboard feels like a wrung out sponge. You don't want standing water at the bottom, but you also don't want your cardboard to be too dry. And we'll just mix all of that up so that all of the cardboard gets wet. So now the shredded cardboard is going to act as your carbon material or your brown. And that feels like it's about the right moisture consistency. Just about one or two drops can come out when I squeeze it. To the bin, I'm going to add about two quarts worth of used coffee grounds. Now used coffee grounds is going to act as our nitrogen. Um, I know that's a little confusing because people like to say browns and greens, but coffee is brown, but also a nitrogen. I don't like to use the brown and green language because it can get confusing, case in point. But I'll get off my soapbox about that. Coffee grounds are a nitrogen and we will add about two quarts of nitrogen to the shredded cardboard. This is where I start putting on my gloves because it's starting to get messy in here now. And I'll just mix that all together. And remember the food puree that we made earlier? I'd like to add some of that to this mixture because shredded cardboard does have hardly any nutrients whatsoever. And uh, the used coffee grounds has some nutrients, but not enough to make good castings. All right, we'll just mix this all together. Now, we'll just go ahead and put a lid on it. You want to keep this in a warm environment, something that's at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that way the bacteria in there will really get a chance to start working. In about a week, you're gonna wanna come back and check the temperature of the bin with a soil thermometer. Just kind of stick it in there and see if there's any thermal dynamics happening. If it's above 130 degrees, just give it a little turn. So the key is you wanna keep turning it every week until the temperature is no longer rising above 130 degrees. You can't feed this to your worms if it's getting that hot. And it's great that it's getting that hot. That means that the bacteria is working on overtime. Now there's a good chance that it might not get hot at all, that it'll always stay at room temperature and that's okay as well. Just give it some time to make sure that it doesn't get above those temperatures. Now, at this point, you can do two things. You can go ahead and either spread this into your existing bin, or you can go ahead and put worms directly into this bin. I would start off with about 500 worms for this, um, and then they will grow their population. Now, the key to this compost, well, the key to any compost really, is to make sure that it is moist enough. So you always want to be able to maintain through all stages the wet sponge feeling. That keeps the microbiology happy, but it also keeps your worms happy. So if you've made it this far and you're still thinking, this is still too much work for me to make worm castings. 
Well, you're in luck because here at Sunnyside Soil, that's what we sell. We sell worms and worm castings. So go to sunnysidesoil.com to purchase your own. Everyone talks about what to feed worms and moisture levels, but temperature might be the single biggest factor affecting processing speed that people ignore. The temperature sweet spot that red wigglers, which is the most common composting worm, work best between 55 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But here's what most people don't know. Their metabolic rate essentially doubles for every 10 degree increase within that range. A bin at 70 degrees will process material dramatically faster than one at 55 degrees. My winter strategy, and because this matters most in the winter, is that I used to just accept that my bins would slow down when it got cold, but I don't do that anymore. Now I bring my bins into either my garage or my basement where temperatures stay more moderate. Now, if you don't have that option, insulating your bins makes a huge difference. Now, here's some insulation techniques. You can do everything from wrapping your bins in old blankets to simple insulation boxes from foam panels. The goal isn't to make them hot, it's just to keep them from getting cold. Even maintaining 60 degrees instead of 45 degrees will dramatically improve processing speed. Now in the summer, you have the opposite problem happening. Above 84 degrees and worms get stressed and slow down. They might even try to escape. I keep my bins out of the sun during the summer and I've even used frozen ice packs placed on top of the bedding during heat waves. The worms will go ahead and congregate around those cool spots and will stay active. Now, monitoring these temperatures is crucial. I keep a simple laser pointer thermometer that I can check in on my bins with uh, almost daily. Now, this gives me an early warning if things are gonna go wrong, but it also helps me understand the relationship between temperature and processing speed in my specific setup. Well, great, but what does this all mean? Well, when I started actively managing my temperature, my year-round production became way more consistent. My winter production probably tripled and my summer production stayed strong instead of just dropping off during the heat waves. All right, so there you have it. Three proven methods to dramatically speed up your worm casting production. Making a simple cardboard mix with cardboard and nitrogen creates a microbially rich superfood that your worms will process twice as fast. Pureeing increases surface area and processing speed by up to three times, and temperature optimization keeps your worms working efficiently year round. Start with just one of these techniques and you'll see some results, but if you use all three together, you'll be amazed how much faster you're producing black gold. Now, the topic of this video came from a question that a regular viewer had named Martin. Martin, thanks for the idea. All of that is just to say that I do read the comments and the questions. So if you have a question that you would like to see turned into a video, then comment below.